I just turned 60 years old this year. Some of my favorite things to do, at the top of the list, is to travel. I love live music. I like going to concerts, and that's just a, a great joy of mine. I have a list of, of performers that you know I plan on seeing in the next few years. In my early to mid-30s, I was having trouble with little things like, you know, I would go to comb my hair and and I noticed like it was um, having a hard time like reaching my arms like past my shoulders, like reaching upward. Um, it would kind of strain my back. And um, walking up stairs. The biggest issue I was having was lower back pain. One doctor told me that I I was bending like an 80-year-old. I mean, who wants to hear that? My name is Sandra, and I have Pompe disease. Pompe disease is what we refer to as a lysosomal storage disease. That means that within a little compartment inside the cells of the body called the lysosomes, something is accumulating and stored over time, and in the case of Pompeii disease, it's a substance called glycogen, which is a complex sugar that's stored in the body. So patients with Pompeii disease are not able to normally break down this complex sugar that we all have in our bodies. And since they're not able to break it down, it progressively accumulates and does damage to the cells and tissues. When the doctor told me that I had um, what's called late onset Pompeii disease, I just cried and cried because finally we can put a name to what I had been going through and it was progressively getting worse. Infantile Pompeii disease results in problems with both the skeletal muscles and the heart. They have muscle weakness, they're not able to move as well as other infants. They also have an enlarged heart, and as the heart disease progresses, we see heart failure, and that causes difficulty with breathing, respiratory distress, rapid breathing, enlargement of the liver. In patients with the later onset form of Pompe disease, we don't see heart involvement, but what we see instead is progressive muscle weakness. So we see a child who begins with maybe just seeming like they're not very athletic, a little uncoordinated, uh, you know, not as fit as other kids, and then over time, they start to struggle more and more with going upstairs and doing things that require more muscle strength until it becomes obvious that there's a real problem with muscle weakness. I'd say my condition worsened towards my mid-40s. My body just felt weaker. I was starting to fall a lot. And then one, one day that really um, did it for me and I realized like I really have to find out what's going on. I was coming out of the front door of my house on my way to work. I fell down the front steps of my house and I drove myself to the emergency room. And I knew then like something has got to give there is something going on and I have to find out. So I was on a mission from that day on.
historically in the past, because this is a rare disease, many patients were erroneously diagnosed as having muscular dystrophy. Uh, they didn't get the specific testing that would lead to the diagnosis. But early diagnosis is critically important because this is a progressive disease and that damage can be irreversible. We also see in Pompeii disease that the respiratory muscles that help us breathe, including the diaphragm, are affected significantly and that causes difficulty with breathing. Really, it's the weakness and problems with mobility, getting around, and the respiratory problems that are the major issues that we see in the late onset form of Pompeii disease. Just fix me. When I found out my aunt had a rare disease called Pompeii, I was confused because I didn't know what that was. I've never heard of it before. And then she invited myself and my family to this um, presentation, you know, to talk about Pompeii and explain um, what exactly it is and how it affects you. Um, and I was relieved. Um, I, I was happy that she finally got an answer to her questions that she's been wondering about for years. My sister, Sandra, is uh, vivacious, determined, courageous, uh, outspoken. She's been an inspiration to me for my entire life. As I observed her and I observed the effect that the disease was having on her, it was, it was a gradual thing. It wasn't something that seemed like it, it happened overnight. Um, but I could tell for her, she was noticing that the way she could express her body was, was changing. And I knew that was, you know, a bit jarring, maybe even a bit depressing for her. Although I was relieved to know what it was, I had so many things going through my head, like what is my, the, my quality of life going to be like? Will I still be able to do the things that I enjoy? I, I love learning. I wanted to continue and, you know, with my education at the time. I took that time that I needed to wrap my head around my reality. And then I decided that I wasn't going to let it define me and I wasn't going to let it take over my life. And then, you know, after I kind of snapped out of it, I said, why, why can't I? And I did. That same year, I enrolled in a, in a doctorate program. I belong to um, a Facebook support group. Um, I'm also on the board of Pompeii Alliance, and I think all of those things work hand in hand as far as you know having that support system. Your support system is everything um, when you're dealing with a disease of this nature or anything difficult in life. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Come on back. Low and steady. Hello. We'll take goes, right? <laughs> yeah, nice big steps. Big one. Good. You got it. Pompeii disease is not curable at the present time, but it can be managed medically. We have definitive treatment for Pompeii disease, which is called enzyme replacement therapy. But in combination with that, we use supportive treatments, uh, maybe physical therapy in some cases. We try to look at their needs comprehensively. The day that I was diagnosed, I already knew about the um, enzyme replacement therapy treatment for Pompeii that was available because I had done research. And um, so I said to my doctor, um, when can I start treatment? I received it starting that day. I think you know, for anyone who's been diagnosed with this disease, my sister is an inspiration. For even anyone who's just dealing with challenges in their life, she's an example of, you know, courage, mental toughness, focus, perseverance. I'm just 
proud of my aunt. You know, even though she's diagnosed with this rare disease, Pompeii, she didn't let it stop her. She's inspired many people um, with Pompeii disease and other similar diseases to live out loud and still, you know, live their life and pursue their dreams no matter what they're faced with. I have hope for the future for the, the children that are born with this, this disease, hope that there are better treatments and ultimately a cure soon so they don't have to go through what I have to go through. I had to mourn my previous life because of the things that I can no longer do. And there's a lot of things that I couldn't, that I can't do that I learned to improvise. So there is life after Pompeii disease, I tell you that. And um, there's life with Pompeii disease.